Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new DS1621XS Plus. What a mouthful that is, but we've already done a huge 20-30 minute review of this on another video. Hopefully it's already live, but I know a number of you, those are long, long, long videos where you just want to find out right now whether you should go for this and ultimately does this NAS deserve your data? So, carrying on from before, just like we're doing with the other NASes today, we want to talk about the five reasons that you should buy the DX, uh, DS1621XS Plus and five reasons that you shouldn't. Let's crack straight on. Reason number one that you should buy this NAS is because it is 10 GBE or 10 G or 10 gigabit Ethernet, whatever you want to call it. This device arrives with support of up to 10 times the usual Ethernet speed in your home or business environment, typically. That means that this device with its great hardware architecture inside and intelligent caching also gives you the ability to have output 10 times that of traditional network speeds. It's already got two 1GBEs, which we don't really care about, to be honest, but the fact that this device has got 10G on board is a big, big deal. The, in the past, Synology has always held 10G be a bit of an arm's length, always asking you in most cases in their disk station series, certainly to choose between internal performance with a good CPU, maybe SSD cache and good memory combos, or external performance, asking you to attach PCIe upgrade cards for LAN ports, or in for some rare cases, 10GBE. This is one of the few NASes out there particularly in desktop form, that features both great internal and great external speeds. And the fact that Synology's disk station, um, so desktop-based 10 GPE history, is very, very thin on the ground. The last one, I believe, was the DS1817 non-plus, and that had an ARM 32-bit CPU inside. So that CPU was really struggling if you wanted to get the most out of that 10 GBE. Do remember that you will have to use the right kind of drives media, the right kind of SSD perhaps, or the right RAID to get a full 10 G connection on this, but you can directly connect point to point from a PC Mac system and this NAS. I'm utilizing Ultrastar 10 TBs inside this device for my testing coming very, very soon. And that should give me close enough, or if not, bang on the money for that 1000 meg uh, megabytes per second. Reason number two that you might want to buy this NAS is that CPU and memory combo. Inside you have got an Intel Xeon. Uh, it's a quad core based Xeon with over 9,000 uh, reported on CPU benchmark. And on top of that, it also arrives with eight gig of DDR4 ECC memory that can be upgraded up to 32 gig. That's impressive. Two slots inside, so 16 per slot, bang. 32 gig memory. So again, it's that idea that you are buying a NAS, a six bay NAS here, with some very high end materials inside. Now do bear in mind that CPU um, isn't the newest Xeon right now, but still Xeon is incredibly popular in file, um, fast file processing right now in network attached storage. It's not graphically enabled, it doesn't have any kind of transcoding engine or embedded graphics, but it makes up for that with raw, raw power. It's one of the main reasons we highlighted the DS 3617XS, that big old 12 bay for Plex users, because although it didn't have a transcoding engine, it had the raw horsepower that outperformed all the other NAS devices in the disk station series that had transcoding because of the horsepower inside. And the fact that we've got that error code correction memory built in and DDR4 at 2666 megahertz means that internal performance with this is going to be fantastic. Reason number three that you should go for the DS1621XS Plus is because it's five years warranty. The majority of Synology NASs, particularly in desktop form, almost all of them, there's very few exceptions, are either two or three years of warranty, which is still good. You do get a lifetime software warranty included, of course, but the hardware warranty is kind of the one that a lot of people are primarily focused on. It's the one where the device could fail over time, the way it's constructed, how long it's designed to be working at full pace for, and the majority of them come with two to three years warranty. And the XS series, which this is a part of, arrives with that five years of manufacturer's warranty factored into the price. And given this device is supposedly going to be retailing somewhere between 13 and 1500 pounds or so, depending on the region uh, that you live in and your tax and stuff like that, unpopulated, it's a very expensive box, but you've got that five years of warranty and great internal external performance as well. Reason number four that you might want to consider the DS1621 XS Plus is because it's NVMe equipped. This device arrives with two NVMe bays inside that allow you to add SSDs inside the device. Let's remove one of those. 
put that there. And inside this device, you can see those two NVMe bays just inside that allow you to install SSDs. This means that you can improve your internal performance exponentially. Now, of course, you can already install 2.5 um, 2.5 inch SSDs in the main storage bays, but these NVMe's that go inside uh, between 1800 and three or four thousand megabytes per second, thanks to the PCIe Gen 3 times four of each of those NVMe slots, means that that internal performance and the great speed and high IOPS that SSD afford to you can be spread over to the slower, you know, lower priced and traditionally larger capacity hard drives, leveraging a lot of the advantages of those SSDs. It's more precisely used towards frequently accessed files and smaller files for caching, so you're not going to see benefit when you're streaming a giant 4K movie, really, or if you're going to be using large-scale images like ISOs, but if they're more frequently accessed, the system may well use uh, parts of that if it's a broken down file or the whole, session, uh, the whole section and move it into the cache. The system is intelligent enough to see um, what files need to be accessed and where the caching is going to benefit you, the end user. And SSD cache is something Synology have really, really taken seriously uh, in 2019 and 2020 with almost all of the 2020 series devices arriving with NVMEs and this in the 21 series having it as well. It's lovely to hear. Reason number five that you might want to consider the DS3617XS Plus is even though it's got SSD cache inside and even though it's got 10 GPE on the rear and a Xeon and ECC DDR4 memory inside, it's also got an NVM, uh, sorry, a PCIe SS, oh God, sorry, really heavy, a PCIe upgrade slot here. That PCIe slot there is PCIe Gen 3 times eight which means 8,000 megabytes per second bandwidth on that single lane, which means you can add more 10 GB ports, such as the new 2-port E10G20 T1, uh, two um, RJ4510 G base T card on the inside. You can add more SSD caching bays as well, uh, utilizing the M2D20, even the combo card, which will allow you to create an even bigger area of cache with uh, the combo card E10M20 T1, which will allow you to add a 10 GB port on the rear, allowing you to link aggregate across the two, and two more NVMe bays where the SSD caching can be built into a larger RAID 5 um, of that SSD caching area and a larger area of cache to play with. So loads of things about this device are what really set it apart from devices in the 6-bay area, you know, like the DS1618 and this device's predecessor, the DS3018XS, but it's not all great. There are reasons why a number of you may not go for this as your next NAS. And again, I'm talking to home and business users alike. So reason number one that you might not buy this NAS is because that price tag. Again, it is a desktop NAS and there's a lot of hardware inside this. So I'm not going to say it's not good value. I'm just saying right now, without hard drives or SSDs, 13 to 1500 odd nicker for this NAS without your hard drive or SSD media is going to be a bit steep. It may be more expensive in other regions as well. And once you get this device and you populate it with hard drives and SSDs together, you are looking at two and a half to three grand of spending there. That's a lot of money, particularly for a home user, but for a business, that's kind of rack mount territory money. And although you won't get a rack mount with these kind of specs for that sort of money, you can kind of scale a little and look at, say, the RS1619XS uh, Plus, a four-bay rack mount that has most of these features without the 10 GBE, but that's about 1,600 nicker, but at least then you're moving into that rack mount area. Now, again, you are getting an excess now, so you've got that five years of warranty as well. So you really have to look at that price tag, but there's just no avoiding that compared with the four bay NASs we've seen around for the last few years, and even that five bay, the DS1520 Plus, this is a very expensive box, but you have to realize its value, not just that price tag. Reason number two, so you might not buy the DS1621XS Plus, is because it has those NVMe bays, but they're not designed for raw storage. Synology have been very, very rigid on this. Their NASs that have got those NVMe bays, um, almost, I'll say almost all of them, do not let you utilize NVMEs currently for anything other than SSD caching. Now, in the smaller devices like your Celerons, uh, maybe even an early Pentium, you can understand that. You could argue 
you know that the, the, the CPU doesn't enough inter have enough internal PCIe lanes to support NVMe bays and the memory bay and the port and the add-ons and basically all the features of a NAS that plug into the CPU. Um, and with that, you could have the NVMe bays, but they wouldn't give you um, three, four thousand megabytes per second each, and therefore allowing them for raw storage wouldn't give you that raw potential, and that makes a lot more sense. But on the Xeon powered CPU, this has way, way, way more PCIe lanes, and therefore there's a better chance of being able to take advantage of those NVMe slots for raw storage. But it's still something Synology is not prepared to entertain on this device either. Reason number three, and this is a kind of a nebulous one, this the device itself can be expanded. Now, with regards to expansions, we've got these two eSATA slots right there. They allow you to add two. DX517 um, expansion base. So five bays, five bays. Hence the name having 16 in the title. It's got the six, got a five, got a five. There's the math. But both of those expansion devices are going to be JBOD and handled by this system. So they always have to be connected by the proprietary eSATA cable. And they need their own mains power as well. However, Synology has their own expansion 12 bay, the DX1215. That 12 bay expansion connects via a proprietary SAS connection external. And those 12 bays, it would be so much better if this device supported the 12 bay expansion, not the two fives. I would rather have a single PSU device with 12 SATA bays going into that proprietary SAS than those two fives. Now, don't get me wrong, there is obviously the argument of 12 bays going into proprietary SAS at 12 gig versus two five bays going via six gig connection each. But given this device's predecessor, the DS3018XS allowed two 12 bay expansions, to me it seems a little bit of an oversight. I'd be very interested to know why Synology went down this route to know why this device only supports the two fives and not one or two of the 12 bay expansions. Reason number four that you may want to go for this device, uh, you won't want to go for this device, is it doesn't support SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. Now, for a number of you, that is going to be a big blow. For those of you that are a bit more versed on the Synology range, you almost certainly know that the XS series does not support Synology Hybrid RAID. Synology Hybrid RAID is more fluid RAID system. You've got your traditional RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, and all that lark. Um, but Synology's own RAID is comparable to RAID 1 and RAID 5, and an SHR2 comparable to RAID 6, but it allows you to mix and match drives. Now, you're not going to do that on day one. You're going to get this device, and either you're going to fully populate it with exactly the same drives, the same 4, 8, 6, 10, whatever drives, or you're going to partially populate it and leave some bays empty. Now, with SHR, you could populate this with maybe three 10 TB drives on day one in an SHR, so you'd get 20 TB to play around with. And two or three years down the line, your space is starting to run out, run out. So you're thinking about adding more storage, and you see a good deal on, let's face it, they're out there, the 18 and 20 TB drives currently available uh, or about to be in, uh, released from Seagate thanks to their HAMR series. So you might buy bigger drives. Now, traditional RAID will not let you mix these drives together and get their benefits. It will be able to add them, but it will class every drive as the smallest possible drive. So all three of those potential 20 TB drives will be seen as 10. And SHR will see them as 20. It will make sure there's at least 20 TB of redundancy, but then it will allow you to add this extra storage and factor that in. You would get vastly more storage in an SHR, something not supported on this device. Now, I've spoken to Synology about this. SHR, they do not consider to be right for these higher tier platforms when performance and rigidity and robustness is absolutely key. is isn't to say that SHR isn't stable, but SHR is designed for smaller form factor areas. And particularly once you reach this series and this intended user, they don't feel it's appropriate. Whether you disagree, I'll be very interested to hear you. Because me personally, I would love to have seen SHR on this. And I will be doing a test of removing an SHR from a 4 bay NAS and putting it into this to see what happens. Reason number five, you might not buy this device, is it's very, very similar to uh, the DS3617XS. Maybe you've already bought that 12 bay. You know, maybe you've already bought the 12 bay that was released now 
almost four years ago, that 12 bank expansion has the same CPU as this. It has the same DDR4 memory, but it uses long DIMM and goes higher. It has the same PCIe slot. It doesn't have the NVMe SSD cache, and it doesn't have 10 GBE. And it is a 12 bay at like 2,200 to 2,400 pounds. So it's a big old spend, but still, they're quite similar. And if you want to prioritize storage over power, then chances are the 3617XS might be more desirable to you, to you. Or maybe you've purchased the DS3617XS and you were looking at upgrading and then gone, I like this, but it's not big enough for me. A number of you will obviously draw that comparison. The comparison between this and the DS3018XS that I've already filmed, this thing won in space. There's no avoiding that. But against the 3617XS, there's that argument about all that storage and also the release difference between them means that even if you compare them and go, this one's better because of the 10 GB and NVMe, you still can't help but notice that the CPU is the same from that family a few years ago. Yes, there's a counter argument. Sonology, the longer it has with a CPU and architecture and chipset, the more they can eke out of it with the R&D and get even better performance. But a lot of us PC builders will look at that CPU and go, hmm, come on, it's coming on a bit, isn't it? But those have been five reasons to buy the DS3 1621XS uh, Plus and five reasons you shouldn't. Personally, I really like this device. And there's some QNAPs I'm looking forward to comparing this against, like some of the ZFS stuff and the 672N. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these guys compare because this is probably one of the best analogies I've seen. It's certainly going to be in my top tens at least once or twice at the end of the year. And I recommend you check those out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do click like if you have and click subscribe to learn more. There should be a full breakdown to this, uh, both the review and the 5x5 at NAS Compares in the description below. And you can visit the guys at span.com to buy your NAS today. But I will see you next time.